So we're going to go through generating a species accumulation curve for, um, for breeding bird survey data. This is the same data sheet um, that has been shown and demonstrated a few functions in Excel in other videos. Um, it's partially filled out, but it's filled out enough to start to look at species accumulation curves. And so um, I am going to pause this for a moment. Okay, and so um, in a previous video, I showed a couple of functions in Excel, including the sum function. And this sum function will tally the information from a range of data. And you can, it's really nifty because you can drag this function across. And as long as the correct range of cells are selected, and always double check, then it's going to be correct. So something I just noticed right here is that it's actually not always the correct range of, of cells that are being tallied because as I add new data, um, I need to expand my range. And so I'm gonna do that here because I've added rows of data, species to my data set. And so the range of data I wanna select starts with cell B3 and it extends down to B34, okay? And so once I do that, if I, as long as I'm selecting the very first species, the cell that re references the numbers of the very first species observed all the way down to the most recently observed species, this will be a correct function. And the numbers don't change for these early tallies, but they do for the later ones, okay? And so um, now we have total numbers of individuals. We need to do the same changing the cell referencing for doing counts where you can tally numbers of species. Okay. And then here is where this process of adding new species. Um, I mentioned you can use the count function, but it has to be redone each time. You can't drag a count function across because you're going to always need to be referring to different ranges of cells. Um, but I can pretty readily do that in this data set. It's not going to be so large that I can't use the count function to um, count the new observations from a data set. Okay, and so um, I'm going to do that now for this range of data. And I'm, all I'm doing is I'm dragging to the cell where I can see because I'm adding species to my list as I, as I go. I'm not resorting or reordering them in any sort of way and it makes it easy to count the new species added. So I'm dragging up to the point where I see that there's a new species that wasn't detected in the previous survey. I got the correct range of, oops, I did. Okay, so this is, oops, see? I have to do this. I, the only thing I have to do is make sure I'm referencing the correct range of cells, which I wasn't here. Okay. This data set it goes here. So I'm showing myself making an error because I think it's important to see not only that the people that do this all the time make errors, but to see how I'm checking. I can see by going into this formula and looking at what's been selected. And this appears to be okay. Okay. And so I'm in. K, I'm in column K, and it looks like nothing new gets added in column K. L. M. So I've done a shortcut here by typing the equal sign in rather than selecting the function key. 
um, the function symbol here. Um, and it's a shortcut you can take. Just about done. So you're going to do this for all of your point counts. It's going to be 30. Um, and then I can actually use a formula that I used starting with the second cell of data for the cumulative species. And so basically I'm adding the number from the previous count and then adding to that the new species detected. And so that's in this case 8 plus 3 which equals 11. And I did it using cell referencing. Um, which then I can just drag that formula across. And a few ways that I check, I might just check the math in this case because it's a few additions, but I can also just make sure for one thing that the numbers are always going up. And you can, you can do, um, you can look here. Is a 14 the same as 11 plus three? Yes. Is 20 the same as 19 point plus one? Yes. Is 27 the same as 25 plus two? Yes. And so you can double check that and make sure that everything looks right. So now I have this array of data here. It's my cumulative species and I want to use that in a species accumulation plot. And what I always do is I take the calculations and then I will paste that range of data as, as values. Okay, and so I can tell Excel just to paste the numbers. If I just paste that range of cells, it's going to give me different numbers because it's actually pasting the formulas. But if I select hit paste and right click on that, I can select this icon for what it's, it says paste values. And it's just at this point pasting now the results of those formulas. There's no more, if I click on these cells, I don't see a formula anymore. Whereas when I click in these cells, I do see a formula. So I have that range of data. And then I also have my range of data that reflects the points that were surveyed. And in this case, it's going to be 1 through 30, but here it's actually 1 through 14. And so um, we can select this range of data right here. Oops, 1 through 14. Actually, it should have one more P15. And if you actually highlight this data, click insert, and select on charts. I would start, mm, I guess you could make a line chart or a scatter chart. I tend to prefer scatter charts, scatter plots. Um, and you can actually see here that I have a default scatter plot that got made when I selected that scatter. Now the thing to make sure when you're go looking at it is that you um, have the correct data. Okay, and so you can go into here and view the series, um, format data series. Uh, let's see if we can select data. That's what you need to select is select data. In series one, so the horizontal, so the x axis category is your plots, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, et cetera, okay? So it's plotting those. And then the y-axis are your cumulative species. And so you can actually verify that. This does look like the number eight all the way up to the number 32. And so this is what my species accumulation plot looks like right now. Um, if I, once I have finished one, I will actually label my axes, so you can actually add things like axis labels, um, axis titles it's called, and so I can label this axis and call it, call it number of plots. So my battery's running low, I'm gonna have to deal with that. Um, and then cumulative species. Okay, and so I have my axes labeled. Um, and then you can give your figure a caption. One thing to note with this curve is I'm using it to say something about my data set. And so what I can see here is at 14 plots, I am still adding species. And so um, across a 30 plot survey, 
what I'm going to be looking for with these plots is to see if I have collected enough samples to say, I know what birds are along this route. And um, so what I would expect to see is by the time we get to 30, that there are no new species being added, that this line forms an asymptote, that it levels off and it stops increasing. And hopefully for several surveys, you don't see an increase. And so that's what the purpose of these accumulation plots are like, is to see if you've sampled, adequately sampled the diversity in an area. And that's how you do them.